welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is episode 112. Um, as you saw in the intro, that was Dave and I playing the guitar, and the instrument Dave was playing is the mandolin. Uh, at the end of the video, you will hear the two of us singing, just a warning ahead of time. Um, so let's get started. I have a couple of finished objects. For so I am wearing the finished Yuxa shawl. So I actually got this knitted in two weeks. So I will be able to wear it this year for Christmas. So um, I've just got it on temporarily so I can show it to you what it looks like when it's being worn. Here it is. I do not usually wear something with a cookie progress keeper in it, but this is where I was at last week. So let me take this off and show it to you. It is sparkly. I don't know how sparkly it's gonna show up in the picture. There it is. So you can see I knitted from there down and the sparkles are not showing up. It's, it's like glittery, but it's not showing up a whole lot in the picture. But this is the Yexa shawl by Janine McCarty, who is the yarn and you girl. And this is in two different shades of sparkly silver, although it's not looking very sparkly in the picture. So this is my first finished project. And then I talked to my granddaughter. If you remember, I finished her hat and fingerless mitts, and I didn't know whether to put a pom-pom on it. We did a pom-pom. Because I talked to her, and she said she loves pom-poms. So there's my pom-pom. And I made this using a pom-pom maker. I have, this is my largest of my set. I have a set of three, and like I said, this is the biggest. I got all three of these off of eBay for, I think I paid, it was under $7 for the three. So if you would like to see a tutorial on how to make a pom-pom using a pom-pom maker, I will put a little card up here. If you click the little I, that'll take you to a pom-pom making tutorial and show you how to do this. So I just have to attach this to her hat yet. Now for my works in progress, I have, I'll do my knitted ones first and then I'll show you my crochet. And of course I'm partway through a row, but I worked a little bit, not much, but a little bit on my plaid adaptation poncho. That's right here where I was last week. So I have um, almost finished this section. I have a couple more rows of this rust. And then I have a, a couple sections, small sections of gray, and then a section of the cream. So I'm probably three quarters of the way done my second piece. So here it is at the bottom, and then it goes up through here. And I've mentioned this before, but it gets some duplicate stitching down through here. So it looks like it's plaid when it's finished. So that is my plaid adaptation. And this is um, knit pick, or no, this is Craftsy yarn that I'm using. And it is Sprightly is the name of the acrylic. It's an acrylic yarn. And I think it sells for something like $3.19 this game. So, and it is very nice to work with and it's washable. So that is that project. Then I have the virus shawl. This is the crochet that I am working on. I haven't done a whole lot on this this week, actually. As you will see, there's where I left off last week. So I've only done like two rows since last week. Um, because I've been trying like crazy to get the Yexa shawl finished because I was determined I wanted to be able to wear it for Christmas this year. So here's what this looks like so far. And my colors are coming out pretty true to color um, because my lighting is a little different. If you notice, my background is different to this week. Um, my daughter-in-law and my son and four grandchildren are due in in just a couple of hours. So I'm actually filming down in the kitchen instead of up in the spare bedroom, which is also my craft cave. So um, I'm down here, so the lighting's a little bit different, but the colors are showing up true to color on this. Upstairs, the grays tend to look more blue. 
So that is my virus shawl, and I am using Lion Brand Mandala, and that's what it looks like. And I am crocheting this with a 5.5 millimeter needle hook. I'll get that right, yeah, a 5.5 millimeter hook. So this week, we also have um, some exciting news from one of our viewers that um, I, she told me about it and I was like, oh, I want to share this with, with the rest of you because it is exciting. Um, the viewer's name is Lisa Barboza and she makes um, like cowls and scarves and things like that to sell at craft sales. And I know that several of you do as well. I know Kathy does and Charlene does and uh, Pamela does. And so I thought all of you would rejoice with her with what happened. She was at a craft fair and she had her products all set out on her table. And the table next to her happened to be an alpaca farm who was selling yarn. And they apparently got to talking and the lady liked her products and uh, that she actually decided to, the two of them decided to pair up. So Lisa is going to be making some cows from the yarn that the alpaca store has and they're going to be sold in the lady's store. So um, yeah, she got, she worked out a partnership. So that was really exciting because I know so often it gets discouraging when you go to craft fairs, you spend all kinds of time making products and then you go to sell them and nobody buys them or they don't want to pay the price you're asking and they forget how long it takes to hand make something. So it's really hard to make a profit with crafts and things like that because you don't really get paid for the time and the love that you put into your time, you know, into your product. So um, that was exciting news. So congratulations, Lisa. It's good to see somebody make it. So uh, I hope it goes well for you. And we look forward to seeing some pictures of some of your projects that you come up with using this alpaca yarn. And I think they had an alpaca bamboo blend, which would be really nice because that would drape really, 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 really nice for like cowls and things. So that was exciting. But we also have some uh, show and tell. I haven't done this segment for a while because we were doing the fall along and everybody was, that was submitting projects were ending up in the fall along. But we've had some people submit some pictures or they've posted over on Facebook and I've asked them if I could post the picture because I saw it and went, oh, that's really pretty. So I am going to insert our segment from our viewers of some show and tell items that they have made. Now I'm going to do another segment that I have not done for a while, but since some of you are crocheters, you might have missed out on this before. The, I thought I would do, what am I reading? Uh, most of you know I work for a library, so I tend to read just a bit. Um, but this is the current book that I am reading. It's called Hooks Can Be Deceiving. It is a crochet mystery. It is by Betty Hechtman. I love this series. It is hysterical. They have a really funny, um, one of the characters in here is just, she's one of these over-the-top crocheters that kind of goes uh, overboard with her, her crochet embellishments, and she wears them, and it's just, she has a really quirky personality, and she's one of the main characters in the book. Um, it's just a really cute series. It's really enjoyable. I think there are, well, let me look real quick. There's a bunch of books in this series. 
This is the 13th book in the series. And like I said, it's called Hooks Can Be Deceiving. And um, it's really enjoyable. It's a lot of fun. And like I said, she's very entertaining. She's one of my favorite cozy mystery authors. And it also has recipes and a crochet pattern in the back of the book. But she also writes a second series, and it's called The Yarn Retreat Mysteries. And there's five of those uh, in the series, and they're not necessarily crochet. They tend to be more knitting related. So she has both uh, the knitting and the crochet. The other series is good, too, but this one's my favorite because it's it has a lot of funny stuff in it. So, um, yeah, I'm about a third of the way through the book so far. But uh, one of their crochet um, ladies has a companion because she's a... Um, she has some medical issues and she has a companion and the companion has showed up dead. And the lady who um, she was caring for is the prime suspect. And this lady is in their crochet group. So all of the Tarzana hookers is what they call themselves because they live in Tarzana, California. And um, which I believe is a real place. Uh, but anyway, they live in Tarzana, California and they're crocheters. So they call themselves the Tarzana hookers. And so all of them come to the rescue of the lady who has been accused of killing her, her companion. So anyway, just thought I would pass this on if you want to have some light and entertaining reading. It's a lot of fun. Now, this week is leading up to Christmas. So there's been a lot of Christmas activity in our lives this week. Dave and I have been really, really busy. So I thought I would share some of it with you over the next two weeks. So I'm going to show in a few minutes some footage of what's going on this week. And then uh, this next week, we will be having a lot of family get together festivities because, like I said, my son and daughter in law and four of my grandchildren will be staying with us. And my daughter and son-in-law and her seven children live just a few miles down the road. And we'll be getting together with them several times. And we're going to um, go to my parents for Christmas Eve. And Christmas Day, our house is getting invaded by 29 people. So um, we're going to be doing that. And my grandchildren are going to be playing with us uh, some music for both sets of their great grandparents. Well, my parents and Dave's parents. So that were, will be on next week's video. But for this week, I thought I would share with you what's been going on with us. So here goes. IPM is, stands for International Partnership Ministries, and it is the missionary organization that Dave and I volunteer at. Dave actually processes the newsletters for over 40 missionaries uh, that are national pastors in their own countries, and IPM oversees them, and here I am tapping the envelopes and the newsletters when they are getting ready to be mailed out. And here we have a small mailing that we finished the other day, but this month, with it being Christmas, we have processed over 2,000 pieces of mail. Merry Christmas! Thank you! <laughs> Now it's time for acquisitions, and acquisitions this week have been a lot of fun. Um, on my senior transit, which is what I do for a living, I go out uh, with the library. I'm in the mobile services, so I'm on a daycare van one day. I'm on a senior transit van another day, and then 
the third day I could be on any of those. Uh, so anyway, some of our seniors have been giving us little gifts, and they sent this card. I have to show it to you because it is so cute. These two little ladies did this together. They made a little senior transit. They said thank you, put the bookmobile on it, and then inside is a whole stack of little books and a nice little note next to it. And it's neat because one of these ladies is almost 90 years old, and she knits. And she actually came out one day with her books and, and her knitting needles with a question for me to help her with because she was trying to remember how to do cable stitches. So, um, yeah, we had a lot of fun. So, anyway, I thought this card was just really, really cute. And they gave us chocolate. We won't mention how much of the chocolate may or may not be left, um, but it was quite tasty. And one of our other stops, one of our ladies made us homemade candy, um, peanut butter fudge and peanut clusters. Um, we won't talk about that either. Yeah, my diet is on the naughty list right now. Anyway, but that was that acquisition. Then we had our Secret Santa reveal, which you saw in the video footage just a minute ago on Friday. My Secret Santa gave me this. How cute is that? It's an ornament. It's going to be up all year long. It's going to hang in my craft cave. So I just thought that was absolutely adorable. So maybe I can make one of these and have and have Dave whittle me a, a crochet hook and I can stick it through and then I'll have one for crochet and one for knitting. That would be cute. Okay, I just found a honeydew project for Dave. And then I went, if you saw the Knit Crate video earlier this week, at the very tail end, I showed a picture of a pin. I didn't realize it was in the box until after I finished filming. And I went to pick everything up and I heard something hit the floor. So I inserted a picture of the pin. But here's what it looks like. Like a little skein of yarn with some knitting needles. But I went to Joann's. My husband and I are trying to cover our air conditioning uh, window units that are upstairs. We have central air, but the, the air upstairs, because the bedrooms that are our guest bedrooms are kind of um, up in the attic, it gets really hot up there, and the central air just doesn't get it cold enough. So we have two window air conditioners in the bedrooms up there, but during the wintertime, it gets really, really cold. So we've been trying to make like a quilted covering that I could put over top of the window units or the yeah the air conditioning units. So I had this this wild idea that if I bought the great big you know the big plastic uh, stitch markers that are the round rings that I would sew that on some quilted like heavy duty quilted fabric and we would put tension rods through it and then hang that by tension rod over top of the windows and try to keep the air from um, getting the cold air into the room. But I felt kind of silly walking into Joann's and putting on a credit card like three dollars. So I thought, well, I better buy something to go along with it. And this was sitting in the clearance pile. I mean, it's really, really nice. It's it doesn't have like a, a gusseted bottom to it. It's pretty flat, but it's got a really nice zipper pull on it. And it's like a vinyl, but it's supposed to be leather. And then it's nice inside. What's inside? Oh, just one of those little silicone beady things. But yeah, so inside. Yeah, it's just lined. That's the back of the pin where it snaps in. So I thought, well, it's perfect size for a project bag. And it was only less than $4. It was like $3 and 90 some cents. So yeah, I got that. And the zipper matches the color inside and the color here. So I got that. And if you were watching the Knit Crate, you will see that this is the yarn that I got. I have two skeins of it. And it's showing up pretty true to color. It's got some kind of orangey colors and some gold. And this is a very chunky yarn. It is Vitalana, heathered chunky. And the color I have is Clementine. It's 100% wool, and there are 60 yards per skein. So I have a total of 120 yards. 
Now, one of the patterns that came with this, um, and it came with an option of two, but it turns out that there was a pattern in last year's knit crate that will work with this. Um, the hat pattern, there's no way someone my age is going to wear. So I was like, okay, what can I do with this? And my initial plan was I'm going to, I'll just make a cowl out of it. But then I started talking back and forth with Karen, who is one of our viewers. She is SSK Yarner's podcast. So um, if you haven't checked out her channel, she does crochet and she does knit as well. And I think I've been watching her since she originally started because SSK Yarner started down in Georgia and it was three ladies and then one dropped out and then Karen moved up to North Carolina. So Karen's doing the podcast by herself now. And um, we still hear from Sharon every so often. And Sharon, I hope everything's going well. If you watch this, um, I'm still thinking about you and your son. Her son's having some health issues. Um, so keep him in your prayers. But uh, Karen and I have been chatting on a regular basis. And she sent me a picture because she got this, she got the, the knit crate, but she got it in kind of the um, kind of reddish brown color. And she showed me a picture of what she made with it. And I was like, oh, I really like that. She knitted this into a pocketbook and then she felted it. It's 100% wool, so you can felt this. And it's gorgeous. I'm going to insert a picture right here. So I told her she should write the pattern up and stick it in Ravelry. Um, so she sent me a copy of the pattern because I said I want to try making that out of this. Um, because I just don't know if I would really wear, I, I don't know that I'd really wear this as a cow the more I thought of it. And then I saw her pocketbook and I had like yarn envy. So she's going to, um, yeah, she sent me the pattern that she had worked on, what she did. And so after Christmas, I probably won't get to it till then, but after Christmas, I am going to knit this up into the pocketbook, and then I'm going to shrink it, uh, which is kind of what you do intentionally to felt it. And I hope mine turns out as good as hers did because it really looks neat. Um, but Karen and I also were talking back and forth, and we both um, were thinking that she's doing like a yarn, ad, or she's doing an advent calendar to herself. And I said, well, I kind of did one for myself last year. What would you think if for next year you want to exchange yarn with each other and do a yarn advent calendar? Because yarn advent calendars are a lot of fun. They're neat. For 25 days, you open up and you get a little mini skein of a different color. But if you order them from dyers or from yarn companies, they run over $100. They're really pricey. And all of us know that anytime you have a project, you always have leftover yarn. So I was like, well, why don't we just save 10 or 20 grams, you know, a little 10 gram ball or whatever, whatever's left from our yacht, from a project and roll it up and we'll do an advent calendar for each other. So um, we're going to start on that for next year. So as we finish stuff, we'll have little leftover bits and pieces. We haven't talked about what yarn weight we're going to do yet. Um, so we'll, we'll iron out the details, but we're going to exchange them with each other. So. It's a poor person's way of doing a yarn advent calendar and not spending an arm and a leg to do it. So um, it should be fun because Karen might have different colors that I don't have. You know, her her color choices would be different from mine and mine would be different from hers. So it's a way of getting some varieties. Um, and then you can knit them up or crochet them up into granny squares or cozy memory blanket squares. Some people make them into a cowl and they just keep adding the different colors together or they do socks and they just keep adding the different mini skeins together and making like a um, multicolor socks. So it should be fun. So that's next year's plan, but we're thinking ahead so that we can be saving yarn as we run across it. So we also have some exciting news. As you saw in the title of this, this episode, we have not one, but two giveaways running. So Annie's, uh, Yarn, Annie's Craft Store contacted me and asked if I would be interested in receiving a free pattern. Yes, please. I never turn down free things. And they said, would you like one for your viewers? I was like, yes, please. So they are offering a giveaway for the weekend casual sweater. And I'm going to insert a picture of what it looks like.
And that is going to run for just this week. It starts today and it will run until next Friday because I record on Friday for Saturday. So that is the first giveaway. And I'm going to tell you how to enter in just a minute. Not to leave the knitters out because the, the uh, weekend casual sweater is a crochet pattern. But not to leave the knitters out, I am also going to do a giveaway of one of my patterns. Uh, so the knitting giveaway winner will have a choice of the banner unfurled or the keeping you in stitches pattern. And so that will be the knitting prize. It also will run for the one week. Now here's how you enter, and you can enter in both. If you knit and crochet, you can enter for both. All you have to do is leave a comment down below. Your name will already appear when you put your little comment in, and just say knit, crochet, or both, and that will get you entered. So um, yeah, like I said, it will start today and it will run through Friday. And I will announce the winner on next Saturday's podcast. You do need to have an account set up with Annie's in order to win because that's where your pattern will come. It'll be digitally put into your library. And you will have to have a Ravelry account if you enter the knitting one because that's how you will receive your pattern from me. So that is the giveaway. And Annie's has a huge like a $2,500 giveaway coming up next month. So um, I'm still getting all the details with that. So when I get all of that information, I will let you know about it. But that's going to start in January. So we are going to get on to our So in Annie, since we were just talking about it, they are having hat and glove patterns on sale right now. So you can go over all of the links to the sales that I'm going to share are down below. You just click that link, uh, scroll to the bottom in the description box. Just keep scrolling to the bottom and it will take you to all the sales. You just click on that link. Craftsy is having lots of end of the year sales. In fact, a lot of these companies are having their end of the year sales clearance sales because they're trying to get their material out before the before the end of the year probably my guess is for tax purposes but they're also having new stock coming in so there's some really good sales this time of the year so craftsy is having lots of end of the year sales knit picks is having a luxury yarn sale up to 40 percent off and i think it's over 400 yard uh, different yarns that they've got that are considered luxury 40 percent off yeah they also are running 20% off of their Stroll Gradient yarn. It's a 100 gram cake of yarn. And they also have new items in their clearance section. So that's what's going on with Knit Picks. Hobium yarn has their regular 40% off. I mean, their stuff is always so cheap. I don't know how you could go a whole lot cheaper. Um, Lion Brand has a pattern on sale it's called the crush on you crochet cardigan and it's 20 percent off they are also offering some free patterns for their color of the year um, nick uh, lion brand does a color palette that they choose for each month um, and it's all based on a like an overall color theme for that year so they have some patterns left from 2018, but they're also rolling out the color palette for 2019. So there are a lot of free patterns that are available over there, as well as some sales. And then Knit Crate, um, like I said, I do have Knit Crate reviews. If you want to kind of get an idea what is um, included, you can click the little link up here. And Knit Crate offers 20% off of your first box of your yarn subscription and they offer 20% off. You do need to use the coupon code KCreations20 in order to get that. So that that is the sales for this week. Again, we have the two giveaways running. Uh, Wednesday's video, I think you will enjoy. It has a little bit of humor in it. Uh, it is it was a requested video and it is changing colors of your yarn in your project, how to weave in the ends, different ways of, of attaching yarns 
And one of the ways of attaching is a spit join, and that's where the humor starts. So that will be up on Wednesday, so make sure you, you watch that one. Um, and, yeah, next week we'll have lots of Christmas festivities. So I'm going to wish you all a very Merry Christmas ahead of time. And I hope you have a wonderful time with you and your family. And I'm going to close this episode with Dave and I singing a Christmas carol for you. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas.